And welcome back to Jeff mm -hmm. Craig Nagin live at the Intercontinental Hotel here with the Vice Chair of the Kenya Human Rights Commission, Betty Murungi. And also, Mr. Constitution himself, Karate Kabaki, KK to his friends. Folks, switching gears once again. We've gone from the list of shame, we've gone from uh, the appointments, and now the president's plane. Mm -hmm. What was that mess about, KK? I mean, that, you know, he was flying to the U.S. through Yemen. I guess he, they were going to Dubai and then changing planes and, and going over that way. But uh, they got to uh, Yemeni airspace and they were turned back. Was that little lack of, uh, what, major la security lapse? Uh, this is a very weighty issue, Jeff. And, um, weighty? I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's either you messed up or you didn't. Uh, it's weighty to respond to. Let me put it that way. Because uh, we have very little facts, if any. Mm -hmm. And uh, to hazard the guess of uh, coming up with why and why not, I think it's a bit too premature. Hopefully there will be some uh, uh, more information forthcoming as far as that issue is concerned. Uh, because it's embarrassing, let me put it that way, yeah. for a head of state to fly to a country and then come back. Mm. I mean, it can happen because, for example, mm. uh, if you have a, a volcano, volcanic eruption, yeah. like it happened in the Atlantic Ocean and also uh, at the Iceland, and then there was a lot of uh, ash. ash and yeah. a lot of planes did that. not fly. Correct. Uh, but this was an ash, so okay, this, this, this was three. Yemen. That's what I think. It can happen, but I'm just giving a scenario. Okay. But this particular one, I really cannot say much about it. Betty? Yeah. I, I think I'm um, not competent to comment on, um, you know, the logistics of... of um, or, or the flight pattern. Or the, what the flight me? path and all of <laughs> that. Uh, but why was the president in such a small plane? I think we should get him a bigger plane. Uh, but my concern really is why our president was going to attend a meeting that was organized by an ex-convict. Well, the key word there is ex, because, you know, Mark, Mark, Michael Milken attracts a yeah. lot of attention. Yeah, I know, I know. But still, I'm glad he didn't make it. <laughs> but he needs a bigger plane. Yeah, yeah. we can get okay. him a bigger plane. All right. <laughs> Obama coming to Kenya, folks. Betsy, first, Bill Clinton's coming this weekend. John yeah, yeah. Kerry comes next week. Barack Obama in July. That's not too shabby for us, eh? Why are we so excited about them coming? Just the other day, we were running them out of town. Do you remember when we said that we don't need Americans, they can, you know, stay the hell out of here? But it's good that they're coming because it shows that Kenya is finally being um, acknowledged as part of, you know, the civilized community of nations mm -hmm. and so on. So this is a good thing. But uh, let's not get over ourselves. Bill Clinton and his daughter Chelsea are coming here to do Clinton Foundation work. Mm. They're not coming here to visit, uh, you know. Us. <laughs> They're coming to, to, to pursue their objectives yeah. of the Clinton Foundation. But it's a big deal, Betty. I mean, it's a big yeah, deal. Yeah, it's a big deal because perhaps we have been out in the cold for so long. Uh, all these U.S. presidents bypass us go to Tanzania and yeah. go to Ghana and yeah. go to all of yeah. these places. So it's good that they're finally coming here. Obama, this is his third visit. Well, his, his, not his third visit, maybe his fourth visit. He came in 2006 when mm -hmm. he was a senator. Mm -hmm. And of course, he had come before when he was, um, you know, coming to look for his, uh, his, roots. his roots. Yeah, and now he's uh, fulfilling a promise that he would come here when he was president, which is a good thing. So we will welcome him yeah. and we will welcome him to Siaya. No, he's only here for eight hours, apparently. <laughs> eight hours. At the UN, and he's going to spend those eight hours in the UN uh, complex. KK, your thoughts? Oh, they are like any other visitors. <laughs> well, welcome. Am I the only one who's excited <laughs> on this bench? <laughs> welcome to the country. I think the point of the matter No, is, I mean, I think it's, it's exciting. Let's just uh, put it this way. Um, the Americans have their own sale of interest. And they override anything and everything exactly. about any country. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is no love by the Americans <laughs> towards Kenya. Let's just make it friendly. <laughs> and there's no favor in coming to this country as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. And more importantly, yeah. Kenyans must go on with and uh, must do their own business. Uh, Obama will come. He's mm -hmm. an American. He's exactly. for to protect and to uphold 
the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya, of, uh, of uh, the United States of America. Mm -hmm. He is an American, period. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between, by the way, right. George Bush, one and two, Clinton, Carter, J.F. Kennedy, uh, Obama, and, and, uh, and the next one. And Nixon. And the next one. And the next one coming. There's yeah. no difference. Please, Kenyans should understand if we have something the Americans need. And we do. All right. And we do. If they will come. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so uh, let's not uh, bend over backwards. Let us not just become so uh, <laughs> romantic and we are confusing ra uh, romantic with, uh, with marriage. Because those two things should not be. You know, but anyway, finally, let me put it this way. Well, sorry, okay, okay. Rom romance and marriage are two different they things. They are two different things, and that's what we have in this country. Mm. We are romantic about the Americans. We are romantic about John Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, Jen, uh, uh, John Kerry is coming. Yeah. Clinton is coming. Yeah. Obama is coming. Welcome aboard, like any other visitor. We have had even, uh, who is this, the first president, uh, one of their presidents came here, hunting. But they are not... That's right, many. Theodore Roosevelt, 1912. Yeah, that was right. a long time 113 ago. 113 years ago. That's right, and he well, was here yeah. longer. So there's no big deal. Yeah. Mr. America, come if you want to come. If you don't want to come, please stay, so stay at home. Yeah. But I'll be happy if they come and say, oh, now we can allow Delta to fly to America correct. from Kenya. Oh, correct, and also help and, us uh, with the security, you and, know, uh, and drones uh, or whatever. And, and for me, if they can come up with the issue of uh, dealing with, uh, first of all, the Americans are the architect of the problems we have. Let us not be under any illusion. Kenyans were killed over 200 in 2008. No, 1998. And 1998, right there, mm. all right? We have had so many problems, the cause of which is America. Mm. So for me, as a Kenyan, I would say, America, you owe a debt to this country. You don't owe I think a debt. we have shared. Hmm. Uh, yes. you shared know, I, I, would, I would probably restate that and say we have shared challenges because the, the, the threat, and, you know, it's, not, it's no longer a threat. It's real. Terrorism is real. Mm -hmm. And it, it affects us. Um, you know, as much, if not more, than it affects the Americans. So I think in, in, in sort of figuring out responses to this really serious challenge, um, it helps that um, uh, we have, uh, you know, we consult on solutions. And, and just because we've, he's touched on uh, this, this problem that we face, um, I think that's the one thing that we haven't talked about today which is important. And, and one of the things I think that the president uh, of Kenya tried to do, which and, and we sort of uh, shut him down and we didn't respond uh, as we should have by having a discussion and a dialogue about it, is when he said that security starts with us. Mm. You remember how yeah. everybody, yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody shouted him out right. of town right. and everybody was so upset? Yeah. But actually what he was doing and I don't know whether this was intentional, was to say that we need to figure out new, new, new solutions which are sort of adaptive to the new challenges that we're facing um, by this uh, terror threat, which is now internal. And I think that's an area that uh, we have to be a little bit more deliberative and a little bit more intentional as Kenyans in the way we respond. You know, yeah. uh, and I, I actually thought that was an opportunity that we lost, as as Kenyans, as uh, and of course the opposition lost uh, that we, opportunity we, we. Yeah. to have that conversation about what this meant, uh, and 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 also the I think the president now didn't take it up again right. to have that conversation about how we can move forward. Yeah. Uh, on that challenge that he, he was posing. And he even had a whole bunch of, a series of ads, right, where he said, Ulinzi Unanza na Mimi. Yeah, Ulinzi, but, yeah Unanza, I think it no wasn't, way. yeah. I, I think because of all that whole PR machine mm. that surrounds him, mm. uh, the message was lost in there somewhere. In the and, and I think, yeah, the message was lost in the translation. Mm -hmm. But that, that was, he was actually proposing an adaptive solution to an adaptive problem, yeah. which is new. The terror threat and the reality of terror that we're facing in Kenya today is ingrown, it's with us, yeah. well, and we really have to think more carefully about it. Homegrown, absolutely. I, I, Take I, it. I couldn't agree yeah. more with uh, mm -hmm. Betty. Personally, I remember in the last time we had a, a bench uh, a conversation with you here, I said we may have to think very seriously about Kenya itself yeah. Yeah. because the problem may be externalized by way of saying, 
oh, we have Al Shabaab, we yeah. even have Boko Haram here, yeah. mm. we even have uh, ICC here. Yeah. But how much of our internal uh, problem is informing what is happening in this country? Uh, and I, I'm one of those people who believe very strongly that we need to safeguard our homeland. And everybody, opposition included, mm. needs to realize there is no holiday that is going to come to this country for anybody, whoever may be sitting in State House, as far as this issue is concerned. Mm. It is too much within ourselves. And one of the prescriptions that I have as far as dealing with this issue, not on a short term basis, but on a long term basis, is this. Mm. Every security system of our country, mm. anybody being uh, recruited to this uh, positions must commit themselves to study the religion, the culture, and the language of those areas where we are most vulnerable. In the meantime, but about that, yeah. about that, I like to say this: as part of our national cohesion program, and I would like to recommend to the governors, every governor should be able to set up the language school. Whereby, if we are in Kisumu, for example, that language school will be for language that is not spoken in that area. If we can do that the whole country, mm. we will be in a position whereby we understand. Because one of the biggest problems, for example, you take the incident in Garissa. Now, from what I understand, is that those guys were mixing with the people. Mm. They were yeah. part of it. Yeah, absolutely. All right? Yeah. But the moment they launched the attack they yeah. went and identified betty you are a christian mm -hmm. so and so you are a christian so and so you are a christian and you get the bullet now it is possible that the intelligence failed us very seriously as far as that one is concerned mm -hmm. my view is that we need to recover it uh, we need to uh, come up with a new dispensation of how do we deal with the security issues of our country? Okay, let me ask you this. Okoa, Kenya is suggesting something. I'll get to Okoa in a second. Real quick, um, speaking of governors, the governor of Mandera's convoy yesterday was attacked again. They thwarted it again. Mm -hmm. Why him? Why is he such a target? I mean, this is like the second or third time he's been targeted. And are we just sitting ducks waiting for the next attack, Betty? Um, Jeff, you know... These security matters are, are sensitive. I would know why the governor's convoy has been attacked three okay. times or four times, mm. and probably they they've thwarted more than more attacks yeah. than we know, yeah. uh, than they've even told us. What is clear is that the way we did things in the past is not working, yeah. and and obviously we need um, uh, some new, uh, like Abage is saying, some new arrangement. Uh, some new security measures or some new uh, plan about how we are going to uh, first of all gather intelligence and I'm sure that's being taken care of act on the intelligence in a timely manner and then avoid having our people um, uh, as sitting ducks uh, you know part of that I think has to be about making sure that the um, uh, the security is handled at the county level at the local level and action taken at that level to begin with. And I believe that might be, um, you know, uh, uh, that might reduce the number of attacks that we are facing. Yeah. Uh, I think blaming our problems uh, on external uh, uh, enemies is, is one thing, but dealing with the enemy within, uh, the terror within, is, is what is critical. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what we were just talking about, about uh, people taking responsibility yeah. as well for their own security yeah. and when you talk about people taking responsibility it starts in the family it starts with you as an individual in the family in the community before you can even talk about the big national level and interstate uh, absolutely security so what's the solution KK what's a quick solution a Department of Homeland Security maybe uh, you can create any anything that you want to create but to me one of the issues that is very very critical uh, the way I see it is this uh, issues of security 
you have to deal with two things. One, uh, the human intelligence, mm. yeah. whereby you are living in an area, mm. you must be able to know what is going on. The second one is we must increase the application of technology because these mobiles, they are being used and we must be able to have mm. among our intelligent people highly trained as far as understanding the electronic um, surveillance is concerned. Mm. Because if you don't do that, these guys who are uh, we are dealing with, they are not fools. Highly intelligent, mm -hmm. very educated. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a student, a student of law, yeah. who w was qualified, and he became part of the, it was uh, the leadership. Uh, this group. Mm -hmm. yeah. The second thing that we need to do as a country, in my opinion, is to look at the scenario of 1963, uh, 1967, 68, and 69. There was a talk of territorial uh, uh, secession. And, in my opinion, when I hear leaders in this country saying, oh, those people, everybody who is uh, from up country must be moved away from Garissa, must be moved away from Mandela, we are not understanding the whole game plan. Because yeah. this caliphate that we can talk about is more dangerous than we are thinking about. Why do I say that? Under international public law, what is a state? When a country is called a state, it has to have five fundamental things. One of them, you must have a defined population. The second one, you need to have internal law and order. The third one, you need to have boundaries. The fourth one, you need to have what is called capacity to, uh, to honor international obligations. And fifth, you must have capacity to maintain territorial integrity. Now, the moment you now start saying that some Kenyans cannot live in certain areas, you are ceding your country. Mm. And for me, we need to be very, very careful. The moment we are talking about Kenya is 582 square kilometers. Oh, so yeah. And you are saying <coughs> there are some people who shouldn't be mm. in certain areas of the country. Oh. No, the government of the Republic of Kenya is duty bound under the constitution to protect lives and property. Okay. Yeah, Across the board. I, I, I can't let you go without talking about Okoa Kenya. You mentioned Okoa Kenya and what were they proposing? One of the things? Okoa Kenya is proposing a whole raft of um, changes to the constitution to deal first with the efficiency uh, of elections, uh, around elections and around um, you know how to deal with election petitions. So they are proposing an increase from the 14 days to 60, to 60 days. Uh, they are also proposing um, registration of voters to uh, reach a threshold of 80% in the entire country mm. before elections are held mm. in every constituency. So you don't have 100% uh, uh, registered voters in your constituency, right. you know, right yeah. here in yeah. Kiambu. Yeah. And then you don't, you have like 40% in Mombasa. Right. So and, they're saying and everybody... And 110 in Tarakaniti. Yeah, well, you have to bring that in. <laughs> Guilty as charged. So, yes. So, so obviously that's you, one of the things that they're proposing, that um, yeah, people must be issued with identity cards and so there must be this registration yeah. Yeah. of a threshold of 80%. Then there's a whole raft of proposals around devolution, increasing the number of allocation to counties to 45% from 15% from revenues, they just don't tell us where the revenues are going to come from, That's but right. increasing it to 45%, right. which right of course the governors are very happy about, right. and of course county people are very happy about. And on the security question, and, and this I find curious, because it already exists in the police law <laughs> that governors should sit on security committees, mm -hmm. uh, but they now want to entrench that in the constitution, that governors, uh, that they would form something, some uh, something similar to county security committees that would, um, you know, work on, on, on what he's saying, this uh, uh, security, homeland security. And by the way, why are you people so um, keen on this thing of homeland security? Yeah. We do have a department of homeland security, which is the Ministry of Interior. So, you know, I don't understand what is this talk about homeland security. It's just 
uh, terminology, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It is. just yeah. an Americanism. So we like to borrow. Probably. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing on the Okoa Kenya agenda uh, has to do with um, uh, judges. <clears throat> they now don't want the president to appoint mm. the judges. Yeah. Uh, they want the uh, Okoa Kenya proposes that judges are appointed by the JSC. Uh, you know, so wow. that the JSC interviews and yeah. then appoints the judges, so that then uh, the, the the president has no role uh, in appointing judges. I'm sure there are some other yeah. things that I've forgotten, but uh, tough, you know, those are, those are key. I mean, I think they make uh, about 26 hmm. proposals, um, you know, to amend the constitution. There is one on citizenship, um, you know, that reduces uh, that. Uh, you know, says that reduces the number of dates by which one is able to hear back about you know uh, registration, right. yeah, right. of citizenship, yeah, yeah a so window, yeah, a window, yeah. So well, basically, tough that's one, it. tough mm. one. I don't know. Yeah. There are many. Well, I think uh, I would like to debunk uh, some of the recommendations that have been made, and I must admit, first of all, other than what Betty has said, I haven't had sight. On the proposal, but I'm sure Beth says she has seen uh, the constitution, uh, the proposed uh, bill. First and foremost, uh, my biggest challenge is on this allocation of 45%. Uh, again, I have not seen a single governor that has demonstrated a capacity of management of the resources they already have. That I have not seen. Mm. So, in my opinion, before we say we give you more money, we need to make sure that we create capacity mm -hmm. that will enable uh, the governor to absorb the funds that are going to be given. Yeah. Currently, what is being given, they don't have to, they have not demonstrated that capacity. Even, so, even BOMET? Whatever the case may be, yes, but I'm talking about generally. Nothing specific, but generally. But as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any one of them. Right. Secondly, one of the biggest challenge of our new constitutional dispensation is we talk about you get this particular if you read chapter four on bill of rights it promises hell and heaven to everybody mm -hmm. the missing link is how do we generate this that we want to share mm -hmm. Within the Okoa Kenya bill, they have not come up with requirements that says Kenyans, wait a minute, we are demanding so much from heaven called state, yeah. but where are those resources going to come? I expect hard work to be entrenched. Mm. I expect productivity to be entrenched. Mm. Because without having productivity, all you're going to do, you have so many um, giveaways. But the next minute, Mr. America, give us this. Mm. Mr. Yeah. Uh, uh, Britain, give us this. Yeah. Mr. This, give yeah. us that. KK, you don't like America very much, do you? <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, 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 pass, I, 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 I can see who's going to be left out of the dinner list uh, when Obama... Yeah, he's not going to be there. Uh, they don't have to call me. I mean, I have no problem with the Americans, you know. But all, all right. I can tell you, yes. let me put it this way. Yes. I think Kenyans really need to ask themselves, all this entitlement that we are talking about, yeah. that will be given by, I saw, I mean, uh, uh, the Okoa Kenya talking about, we want MPs to have CDF entrenched. We want county uh, members of the county assemblies to have their own local funds. We are very good at distributing imaginations. Actually, just to clarify, the CDF is, a is proposed as a national fund under the national government. It's but, not for MPs. Uh, no, let, let, let me tell you, because... The MPs themselves, yeah. they, they, and uh, as you know, from 2008, but you know, I wrote about it, uh, from 2006, July 26, Wednesday, mm. in the nation, there was a full cover. I analyzed that bill, mm. and my conclusion was this, that this is going to be the next year of corruption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next frontier of corruption, as far as I'm And look what happened. Folks, yeah. we're going to have to end it at that. We yeah. are running out of time. Mm -hmm. KK, you said you wouldn't mind a job with this administration. Betty, how about you? If, you? if there was a job out there for you, would you take it? You know, it's not every Kenyan who is looking for a job, uh, Jeff. You have to, 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 to use his word, debunk that idea. <laughs> you know, it's, we serve our, our nation uh, wherever we are mm. in the work that we're doing. If we do it well, we serve Kenya. You know, so we don't have to be given something or appointed to this or that. Right. Yeah, I mean, if, if, 
if a job was advertised and I thought I, I, I qualified for it and I felt inspired enough to apply for it, I would apply for it. Never mind that I probably wouldn't get it, but I would apply if I thought yeah. that is what I wanted. But I'm not waiting to be given any job. I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing. Well, I think the greatest job we all should be looking for is creation of employment. Yes. How much can you create? Mm. Now, this is, a, this is what we should be working with mm -hmm. in terms of our creativity as a country. Absolutely. We want more entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. These people yeah. are looking for a job to do. <laughs> or handouts. And it's very interesting. Is that it? KK, Betty Murungi, good to see you. Good to see you. Say hello to Senator, okay? I will. Not Kiraito, uh, the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Even Kiraito. <laughs> KK, good to see you as always. It's a pleasure. Excellent. What a conversation. That's what we mean when we talk about politics on Wednesday and state of the nation. We're tackling every issue, all issues, left, right, center, back to front. That's what JKL is all about. Tomorrow night, we are putting Inspiration Thursday aside because we have a special guest in the house. I think you better get your tweets ready tomorrow because this man is the man or the country we kind of love to hate. Mm -hmm. My guest tomorrow for the entire hour, British High Commissioner to Kenya, Dr. Christian Turner. Wow. In the flesh. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Make sure you tune in. It's gonna be smoking. Thanks for watching. Good night. Good luck.